So I have a giant teddy bear now. I did actually fall down the stairs this morning, but I was optimistic that I'd be able to talk to you guys without being mauled. Oh my God. Ah! Just before we get into this week's vlog, I would like to say a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is once again the wonderful Wild Deodorants. If you guys are unfamiliar with Wild at all, they are a UK-based deodorant company that use all natural ingredients and have eliminated all of the harmful chemicals that you typically find in shop-bought deodorants like aluminium salts and parabens. Instead, they utilize beneficial ingredients like shea butter to create a product that not only helps you to smell great, but is also super moisturizing and helps you to feel great as well. Their case is in a variety of colors that have personalization options and their deodorants come in a variety of scents to ensure that there is something for everybody including a special sensitive skin range. I personally love me a sweet smelling body product so my favorite from their core range is gonna of course be the vanilla and coconut fragrance which is why I'm so excited to try out the brand new limited edition Halloween fragrance which is toasted marshmallows. It is quite similar to coconut and vanilla so if that is one of your faves then I think you're gonna love to toasted marshmallow and all of the packaging that the deodorant refills come in is actually fully compostable. As well as Deodorants Wild also offer other products including mini deodorants that you can just throw into your bag for when you're on the go and also soap. So if you would like to get your hands on anything from the Wild range, I do have a discount code to share with you guys. My code is BB2022 and that will get you 20% off anything in the Wild range. Once again, a big thank you to Wild for sponsoring this video. So I have quite a hectic week this week. Everything that I kind of have going on is like after work weekend activities and it's kind of hectic in a way where for the most part I still plan on getting quite a lot of reading done. It depends how things play out but fingers crossed I will have quite a bit of time to actually dedicate to reading which I'm really looking forward to. I'm still very much going with the theme this month of mood reading and also setting myself up for success. So off the back of last week's vlog I am currently reading Lotus by Jennifer Hartman. I'm 19 four pages into this so far. This was a gift from Vish. Thank you very much Vish and if you watched last week's vlog you will know that as soon as this arrived it kind of coincided with me having to pick a new book so I just decided to dive into this one straight away. But this one is a romance with an interesting setup because the love interest is a boy who was kidnapped when he was four years old and he's found 22 years later. So it is dual perspective and we are following the boy Oliver as well as the woman who is actually his next door neighbor and they were like bestest friends when they were children. He went missing but the family's kind of stayed close and he was actually kidnapped by a guy who's kept him in a basement for these 22 years and told him that there's an atomic bomb and the world is unsafe like the air is unsafe to breathe and civilization has pretty much ended. So Oliver being four years old when he was kidnapped kind of wholeheartedly believes this and he's very much struggling to come to terms with the world in general because he was kidnapped I think in 98 and if you think like just me thinking about the way that technology alone has advanced over the last 20 years and how we pretty much went from like no internet to the world that we live in now. It's a little bit wild and overwhelming and even more so for Oliver who's kind of gone from not to 100 in the space of like a day. So the prologue is set up where he's left his confinement for whatever reason and he's stumbling along the road and people are taking video of him because he's in like a hazmat suit and he takes off his hazmat suit has a panic attack and collapses so obviously he's picked up by the police and an ambulance and reconnected with his family so the main female character in here is his neighbor and they still live like she still lives next to his older brother so as Oliver comes home she's trying to like help him through this transition into society um, as well as reconnect with him and try and get that friendship back a little bit but there's like feelings and attraction on um, kind of both sides of this as well. So I'm enjoying this. I feel like my main driving force in reading this though is finding out exactly why he was kidnapped and what was kind of going on there because as far as I can tell this guy just put him in the basement, told him that the world had ended and gave him lots of books and comics and stuff so that he could still learn so like he can read, he can write, he's knowledgeable about things. Stop it. Stop being a little dick. 
and then kind of just like kept him fed and safe for 22 years and from what I can tell from Oliver's memories and stuff because there are chapters in here where he's like going back to his confinement and like narrating little bits of like things that he remembers there doesn't seem to be any like ulterior motive for what this guy actually kidnapped him for so I'm wondering if this guy has any connection to Oliver in any way and I'm kind of interested in this guy's motivations and like the actual circumstances of the kidnapping then I am invested in the romance because I'm not really feeling it so it's not like a typical romance read for me there's also in the synopsis it says like to the rest of the world he was the little boy who went missing on the 4th of July to me he was everything and obviously the main female character remembers Oliver from when he was a kid and when they were really close friends but like me as a person I don't remember a whole ton about being four years old can you can you stop do you want this do you want your teddy bear skin so in terms of like how she's feeling such a deep connection to this man because of their relationship that they had when they were very young children i'm not kind of believing it in that kind of way oliver as well is a very adept artist and he dedicated a lot of his confinement to writing and drawing a comic book which i believe plays an important part in the narrative and also like i, I think is relevant to the title of the book so so far i'm having a good time with it i'm invested in it but I feel like it is more of like an interest in finding out what happens than being invested in the romance. Although I do have to say, I'm really intrigued as to how this is gonna come around to a romance and also like how this is going to end. Cause like, it's not reading like a romance right now. But as far as I can tell, that's like, the main part of the story. I mean, it says a love story and I believe Jennifer Hartman pretty much is. She's a romance author. <laughs> I left my phone at my brother's place It's not my fault, don't walk away Cause I don't quite know what you're running from Cause all my friends, they think I'm fun You take yourself too seriously I, 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 I don't wanna hear you say we, we start to I, I, Good evening, or oh, it is, is it just gone five? Yes, still haven't decided whether 5 p.m. is late afternoon or evening, but that is the time. And I've had a, a week mentally, like, see if any of you guys struggle with anxiety or have struggled with anxiety in the past, you will know that you have coping mechanisms. <laughs> that aren't healthy and you know that you shouldn't be doing them but when you get anxious you rely on the coping mechanism and then you get anxious about the fact that you relied on the coping mechanism and you shouldn't be doing it and it turns into this whole cycle of like being anxious relying on coping mechanism being anxious about coping mechanism and then back to the beginning and that's the cycle i've been stuck in for about a week and a half now but <laughs> I don't know it's I, I, I've been feeling better over the last few months as well and I'm still nowhere like near the place that I was a few months ago but it's still distressing me and I'm not having a good time and that being said I did have a really good night last night we went to Hull Fair which is like it's one of like the largest traveling fairs in Europe and I love me a fair it's just autumn vibes 
you know what I'm saying? Like, you know it's autumn when the fair's in town. And I actually want a giant teddy. Curtis doesn't like rides, so we go, we eat fair food. I go on a couple of rides, only a couple, because like it's not the most fun by yourself. And then Curtis is more into the games, but not like super into them. So I was like trying to encourage him just to like, because he essentially only goes to take me. So I was like, why don't you try some of the games? And he was like, oh, I don't know which one to try. So we just stood next to this one, which is like lots of little circles with numbers from not to three on a dartboard. And you have to make at least eight, like all of the numbers that you land on have to add up to at least eight to win a prize. I wasn't even thinking about winning a prize or anything. I was just kind of encouraging him to have a bit of fun. And he, he attempted, he did not do very well. And I was like, you know what? I can do this. I, I can do it. And I did it. So I have a giant teddy bear now, which honestly, I'm just real proud of myself for winning. But I am still reading Lotus by Jennifer Hartman. And my Patreon 24 hour readathon starts in just under two hours. I ideally wanted this done by the 24 hour readathon. And I, I thought that I would have it done and would have started something else by now, to be honest. Sadly, that has not been on the cards for me. I'm working on it, okay? Mental health is a progress. I am a progress. But it is 326 pages and I'm on page 245. So I only have 80 pages to go. The prompt for this month's 24 hour readathon for my Patreon is spooky. So this does fit the brief. So my kind of plans is to finish this in the first couple of hours and then move on to a whole bunch of other things that actually I have to eat my words a little bit. I have to say reading comprehension was a little bit low because I've been banging on about how I don't understand how she has a deep connection with this boy when he went missing when he was four. He actually went missing when he was eight. So I get it a little bit more like still would I be obsessed with somebody who I was best friends with when I was like seven years old I think because she's a little bit younger than him. Maybe, maybe not the trauma also adds an extra level to it because obviously like unresolved feelings and stuff there because of the nature of the ending of the relationship i will give the book a little bit more grace because of that realize that i've made a little bit of a mistake there i'm enjoying it still i still don't really know how this is going to end and it's actually kind of slow and it's not i don't want to say it's boring because there's still elements of it that interest me but it's becoming or it has become quite clear to me that like the goal of this is not as far as i'm aware or as far as i want was aware the goal is not so much about the kidnapping and what happened um it's about the rehabilitation of the character and his relationship with the next door neighbor and that was all kind of finalized earlier on than i expected it to be but now it's kind of come back into it a little bit again where we're talking about the kidnapping and what was going on and like who may have done it so my interest is peaked a little bit more again because of the reintroduction of that element and the fact that that might actually be going somewhere but in terms of the relationship between these two characters it's fine i'm having a good time I'm not my favorite thing ever though. So um, yeah, hopefully we will have, we'll definitely, right, I'm telling you guys here right now, this will definitely be finished by the end of the night. That is my, if I don't accomplish anything else tonight, I will finish this book. This is actually the end of my work week because of the 24 hour readathon because tomorrow I will be doing sprints from 12 until seven. And then I have to pack because I'm going to my dad's to dog sit for the weekend. And if you're wondering whether I'm stressed about what books I need to take with me, absolutely I am. Do I just take my iPad and a book? Do I take two books, three books? I don't know. I've been thinking about it constantly all week, but as soon as I've made my mind up, as soon as I have a decision, I'll fill you guys in. Between you and Fortnite, now I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you take yourself to serious. You see, the light that I use to like give me a bit more like during sprints is casting like a really defined camera shadow here but we've rolled a double it's only a short sprint as well it's like 19 minutes but i do need to change books i'm gonna have a look at because i'm thinking i want to read a couple of graphic things like i have a couple of spooky manga and also a couple of spooky comics so if i could fit a couple of those in during this readathon that would be great but i just want to work out where i'm up to in a certain series i'm so confused okay let me go investigate because essentially i want to read wherever i'm up to in the buffy reboot but i'm up to the bit where there is a crossover and <laughs> i'm struggling to find out what the actual reading order for it is supposed to be so let's see what we've got down here so it's telling me that it's the hellmouth event do i have it this one but like on the guide that i use it's saying that i should read volume three of buffy why is this so confusing okay yeah so volume three says a Buffy Angel event at the bottom. And then it says Angel Volume 2. This is so confusing. Which has Helmuth on it. And then 
How am I? I'm gonna have to go figure this out because I actually don't know. Okay, I figured it out. Next up is indeed Buffy Volume 3. This is why I was confused about the whole like crossover event in here because the way that there is like individual volumes from each of the comics that are about the Hellmouth event and then they have like a bind up, I just found very confusing. But we will indeed be going with this one. So this is the, oh Brie, that's my spot. How do I get in? This was my seat first. <laughs> Too heavy. <laughs> Is this how we've landed? <laughs> Is this the one? Okay, so this is the reboot comic of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So it's essentially the characters and the story of the 90s TV show, which is about Buffy, the one girl in all the world who's destined to slay vampires and defeat like all of the forces of evil. And it essentially just brings it into the 21st century. Now I loved the first volume of this, but then they had an artist change. Dan Mora was the first artist and he was amazing. And the artist that they've chosen to do at least volume two and three makes the characters look like goblins, which is something that I'm just, it just really ruins it because it just feels like a disservice to the actors and actresses that played the characters in here because they look truly hideous in some of the frames um but i do like the story and at least what the writers have done with the characters and the way that it's been modernized and this one was also a gift from bex so thank you very much to bex for gifting this one to me so we have successfully finished one book for the 24 hour readathon which is of course buffy volume three actually quite short even for a comic it's like 112 pages and i read it in like a 45 minute sprint with 15 minutes to spare i feel like with this series they may Made the first volume really good to hook people in and then have kind of like gone in their own direction with it. Changed the artist to like not Dan Mora. Changed up a lot more about the story than they originally had in place in the first volume where it just really captured the spirit of the TV show. So I gave this one three stars. Some of the plot lines in here I just didn't understand like the way that there's a character who's a watcher and he doesn't want to be a watcher but in the show like you have to train to be a watcher you can't just be one and I don't feel like that was really explained and it is a side character which is probably why but I just feel like it's going against the lore of the show. There was something interesting that happened in here towards the end though and a little bit that was like slightly emotional and got me just like a little bit and I, I am excited to continue but mostly I'm excited for them to change artists. <laughs> They're just the art style in here it's just it's truly truly bad like this is supposed to be Giles and some people like Xander I feel like is very done dirty in here Willow's done very dirty what is that what is that like who why I just this series was so promising to start off with and I just can't get behind this art but yeah three stars first book of the 24 hour readathon down so I guess now I'm going to be switching back to Lotus which I am 260 pages into now I only read it for one sprint before we rolled a double um but that means that I have like 65 pages left and we are two hours into the readathon so I've got tons of time sometimes you are Is Lotus by Jennifer Hartman successfully finished? We have 26 minutes left of the final sprint and it is 20 past 11. So the end of this was wild and I really enjoyed it. I do think that there was, I hate at the end, it's especially romances, but it annoys me in all books. I understand why it exists. I'm just kind of eager to stop when we get to this point but you know like the last 20 pages of a book where it's just kind of wrapping up the uh, happily ever after and like the future and the resolution of like the actual plot really annoys me that they exist and I obviously know like if the books ended abruptly then that would be annoying as well but whenever like I'm really excited to like be at the end of a book it bugs me that you have like those extra 20-25 pages but the actual like last 50 pages of this was super entertaining the plot twists in here were really wild content warning in here obviously for kidnapping and abduction also sexual assault and pedophilia home invasion as well and it does have like slight thriller vibes in the kind of themes that we're dealing with here the kind of criticism that I have with this. I gave this three stars, by the way. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but the middle of this 
is really slow and I did struggle with pace a little bit throughout the middle. The actual romance itself I'm not super into because I just think that they're just like a little bit too wholesome for me. Oliver is like the purest, sweetest, most earnest person and because of that he wasn't really doing it for me as a love interest. It totally makes sense to his character and also like in relation to what he's been through but just in terms of it being a romance and my taste in romances, the romance in this didn't do it for me but what I loved is that it dealt with some really dark topics and we had a whole bunch of like plot twists as everything came together at the end. So definitely enjoyed it. Thank you so much to Vish for gifting this to me. I completely understand why you thought I would like this based on some of the romances that I like including like Colleen Hoover but also like Penelope Douglas as well. So that is my second book technically for the 24 hour readathon even though I only read like 60 pages in the readathon and my fifth book for October. So I'm actually quite eager to get started on a new book before the end of the sprint, just to like make a little bit of a start on something before the end of sprints tonight. So what I'm actually gonna do is go have a look around and pick something, and then I'll probably actually talk to you guys about it in the morning. Good morning or afternoon actually now I guess because it is just past 12 sprints have just started. I kicked off my morning drinking some coffee and reading some of my book and then I got ready for the day, took Brie for a long walk, we did some more off lead stuff which is really exciting, she's such a good girl and then got home, got myself ready and now we are sprinting so I'm actually already halfway through this. This one is The Dare by Harley LaRue which Sophie kindly sent to me last week, thank you very much Sophie because I really like her Soul to Take by Harley LaRue and Sophie has just been really, really wanting me to read this. It's perfect for this readathon because it's like only 144 pages. And also it's, it's pretty much just smut and it's short, it's a novella, so it doesn't have like a great deal of plot as far as I can tell. And the reason why it's spooky is that it's at a Halloween party. So they're both going to this party. She used to bully him. It's like a popular kid who's throwing the party. So she doesn't understand why this guy, I think he's called Mason, has even been invited. But they had like thing, it wasn't even a thing. Like they kissed in the bathroom, like, over a year ago but he challenges her to a game of drink or dare which is like beer pong but some of the cups have dares on them and when they get to the dare portion of the game it's really clear that Mason just really wants to humiliate Jessica. So this one like her soul to take is another super kinky romance there's elements of BDSM in here Um, it deals a lot with humiliation and degradation which is not a kink that I'm like particularly interested in but I am enjoying this one so far. The proper smut hasn't started yet. Chapter three is called The Clowns. This does have clown kink in it, assumedly because it is the Halloween party and it's like costumes, which is the bit that I'm a little bit wary of. So the next chapter is gonna be interesting, but I am really enjoying it so far. I'm a sucker for like a popular girl misfit romance. So I knew that it was definitely gonna hit on that front. And normally if a book is like all porn, no plot, I'm kind of over it, but this is a super quick read that's keeping me engaged and I'm actually having a good time with it. So I plan to finish this in the first couple of sprints and then who knows what I'm gonna be picking up. Also, I forgot to say, I did actually fall down the stairs this morning I went up into the attic to check on some stock to see if I needed to order anything for next week and our attic stairs are really steep so I slipped on like the top one slid all the way down. I've um grazed my elbow but aside from that I don't have any injuries but the one thing that I'm really upset about is that I tried to grab onto something to save me and I have cracked well broken one of my Halloween nails and I only had these done on Monday so I have um messaged my tech and I'm hoping that she'll be able to fit me in for a repair because <laughs> I'm upset but um it's not too bad a break to be honest I don't think it's too noticeable so I can cope with it for a couple of days if I have to. Last thing before I go and actually get some reading done is that I did receive a parcel from Book Depository today which I believe is from Vish. I mentioned last week Vish gifted me Lotus because I helped her out with a uni project and and I know she did say she was sending me two books, so I have checked and she, ooh, ooh, ooh. This is The Helm of Midnight by Marina Lostetta. It's an indie by the looks of it, which, and oh my God, look at that. I love it, I'm obsessed. So I do not think that I've ever heard of this, but on the back it says Hannibal meets Miss Bond. The dark and stunning first novel in a new trilogy that combines the intricate world building and rigorous magic system of the best of epic fantasy with a dark and chilling thriller. Once again, another book that sounds very spooky. Then the actual synopsis says, in a daring and deadly heist, thieves have made away with an artifact 
of Terrible Power, The Death Mask of Louis Charbon. Made by Master Craftsman, it is imbued with the spirit of a monster from history, a serial murderer who terrorized the city. Now Charbon is loose once more, killing from beyond the grave, but these murders are different from before, not simply random, but the work of a deliberate mind probing for answers to a sinister question. Corona Hervath and her fellow regulators must enter the mind of madness to stop this insatiable killer while facing the terrible truths left in his wake. Calling me intrigued. The text is tiny. How many pages is this? I don't think it's too big. It's like 450 pages, but I know it's going to feel so much longer because of the size of the text. I love the binding on this. So thank you very much, Vish. This sounds very interesting and I'm excited to get to it at some point. I also really like, I'm assuming that's book two, and I really like the um the cover of that one. So we're almost at three o'clock. It's 23 and I finished the dare, which I would have finished a little bit quicker, but I took one of the sprints um to have some lunch. I really like this. I gave it four stars. Holly LaRue really knows how to write kinky smart. I would say in my experience, I have only read two books from Holly LaRue at the moment, but I'd say that she's way up there with Katie Robert for me in the like quality of the sex scenes that she writes. As with her soul to take, I would recommend looking up a full list of kinks if you're looking to go into the dare because it is a kinky one and it does deal with things like humiliation and degradation, as I mentioned, which is probably the thing that I enjoyed the least about it. We start off with this game of dares that like obviously builds up throughout the night of this Halloween party. And I would say that the humiliation and degradation kind of dares that are happening at the beginning of this book, I enjoyed a lot less than the actual like smut when we got to it later on. But I'm pleasantly surprised because this is pretty much just like a very short erotic novella and I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm really excited to read more from Harley LaRue outside of the Souls trilogy, which obviously I'd already read the first book and knew that I enjoyed that one. So I had a wonder round because I am now at a point where I am out of things that are both short and spooky unless I read some manga. So I have Death Note and Resident Evil volume one up there. But I don't really want to start a new series because I'm still only four volumes into Dream and Sun because they were out of print for a hot second there. And I'm also like eight volumes into Children of the Whales. So I don't really want to start anything new on the manga front. So I've picked up a book that I'm really not sure I'm going to like. That is Gallant by V. Schwab. So if you guys remember earlier in this year when I picked this one up, I pre-ordered the Waterstones version. I noticed that it was special with like fancy sprayed edges. And then I completely forgot that it was an Illumicrate book as well. So I ended up with two copies. I've seen quite a few people review this. Um, some people love it, some people don't love it as much. I'm very hit or miss with V. Schwab to start off with. I love villains, I love Addie LaRue. I don't like the Monsters duology and I don't like Dark Shade of Magic all that much either. And I've heard that this one reads, it's YA, but I've heard it reads like lower aged YA. So one of the reasons I'm picking it up is that I'm anticipating that it's going to be a quick read and also because I think that this might be one of the misses for me when it comes to V. Schwab. I don't necessarily need one copy, never mind two. So it'll give me an opportunity to finally read this and decide if I want to keep it on my shelves. So this is about a girl who is now an orphan and she's at this, is it school? Yeah, she's at a school for girls and she receives, can you put this on the rug please? She's attending a school for girls when she gets a letter from her estranged uncle inviting her to stay at the family manor house, which I think is called Gallant. But when she arrives, she finds out that her uncle is actually dead and only her cousin and the servants are there. And she's told that she can stay providing that she abides by two rules. I think one is to never go out after dark and the other one is to stay on the right side of the old wall. So it does sound like it has a little bit of a creepy atmosphere with the kind of almost haunted house vibes. I don't know if the house is haunted, but that's definitely the vibes I'm getting from the synopsis. So um, I would say it definitely fits. The spooky prompt for my 24 hour readathon. So it's actually, um, well, like I said earlier, almost 3 p.m. So I have just over four hours until the end of the readathon. Not anticipating finishing this because that would be like 75 pages an hour, which I don't think I can do, but hopefully I'll get to at least halfway. So 
I've successfully made it to my dad's. I brought a couple of books with me. I honestly, I don't know how much I'm gonna read while I'm here because realistically, I don't really have anything that I need to do. Um, I have a ton of Netflix and stuff that I can watch. And I brought like my MacBook and my iPad and stuff and also my Switch so I can play Disney Dreamlight Valley. But I'm hoping that this weekend away from home with not a lot to do but watch the babies is gonna mean that I can get a bunch of reading done. So yesterday during my 24 hour readathon I did start Gallant by V. Schwab and it is actually quite a quick read. It doesn't seem like it will be but I am moving through it quite quickly. So I made it to page 120 before the end of the readathon so in total for the whole 24 hours. I read just over 400 pages which for me, thank you, oh thank you. Thank you. I don't know, can you guys see this? Hey. <laughs> So 400 pages for a 24 hour readathon for me is really, really good because you all know what my attention span is like and how I struggle to focus. And I do feel like reading shorter things in the way that I set myself up for success like really, really helped me. The only problem is, is that I can't always do that because I don't really own that many short books. You guys know I don't love short things, but um, yeah, I'm really happy with the progress that I made. And I don't like to read all my graphic novels at once because I don't have too many of them, but I'm glad that I made a little bit more progress in the Buffy reboot and I'm gonna try because that series is finished now. So I'm gonna try to catch up using, hopefully depending on the prompt, my 24 hour readathons to help me out a little bit with that. But I'm 120 pages into this and I was right, it is a little bit spooky. We do have this haunted house element. I don't really know what's going on with the house at this point yet, but our main character, Olivia, can actually see ghosts. And I think from what I can gather so far, it is a little bit, oh, thank you. Oh, from what I can gather so far, it is a family tree and that's the reason why this family are at the house. The priors are caretakers of Gallant and they have a task that they have to perform there. And as soon as Olivia meets her cousin when she gets to Gallant, it's quite obvious that something's going on with him to do with the house and he really just doesn't want her there. The thing that I didn't know about this book going into it is that Olivia can't actually speak. So while she's been at this girl's school that she's been at since she was around two years old, she's really struggled, she's been bullied, she can't communicate communicate with anybody. Nobody really wants to take the time to get to know her and learn how to communicate with her. So she's felt very isolated. And as soon as she arrives at Gallant, there are people who will actually take the time to talk to her. So she immediately has this feeling of freedom and of being at home. Cause even though she hasn't had like the warmest welcome, it's a lot better than the school that she was at. This kind of reminds me of like Bly Manor Hill House crossed with like Alice in Wonderland. Cause I do understand why people say this reads like a middle grade as well. It has that little bit of a sense of whimsy and Olivia herself, even though she she's 16, she does read like quite a young character. And I'm enjoying this. I didn't think I was going to from what I'd heard people say about it. I don't know how the plot's going to evolve and whether that's going to be decent like throughout. But at the minute, I'm pleasantly surprised with how much I'm enjoying this one because I did think it was going to be one of the Schwab ones that I sadly didn't enjoy. So um, with the speed that I read this at yesterday, I do think that I could get this finished for tonight if I do decide that my plan for the day is reading. I really just don't know what I'm going to do with myself, my dad and Claire have just left. Hey, And I'm kind of doing that thing, do you know like where you're in an environment that's not your own so you kind of like don't feel like you can immediately settle? Um, but I think what I'm gonna try and do is um, at least finish this before I maybe move on to something else and then I do have another book that I brought with me on the event because I definitely do think I'm gonna get through this if not today then definitely this weekend and I have another book that I don't think <laughs> I'm actually gonna manage to finish while I'm here. So yeah, that's me set for the weekend. Wish me happy reading vibes and also happy well-behaved pups.
you guys are no way overdue an update and I was, the rotties were outside and I set up and I was optimistic that I'd be able to talk to you guys without being mauled, but sadly that does not seem to be the truth, the tea, the what's going on of it here. I just pet sitting, quite honestly, would be a dream if they weren't so obsessed with me. Leave me alone. You're both too big for this. Sit, sit down Gizmo. Good boy. Your head is very much in the way. Okay, I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to do a rain check on this. I tried guys, I tried. The lens has been dribbled on. We have a snotty nose mark on here. Okay, we will try again. Everybody's lying down now, we're a bit calmer. But this update is quite a bit overdue now because it is 11 a.m. on Sunday. And yesterday afternoon, I actually read this quite quickly, but I did finish Gallant by V. Schwab. I'm quite torn on my rating of this because personal investment in the story like wasn't really there. Like I wasn't overly bothered about the end of it. What are you eating? Ugh. I'm missing Brie at this point. These are two very big, very slobbery dogs and I will never complain about Brie's like tiny little baby dribbles ever again. But yeah, my personal investment wasn't there. Like I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was good, but like I, I didn't feel a particular way either way about the story. I do think that it's a very good spooky read and I understand why people are saying that it reads kind of like middle grade because it does have, like I mentioned yesterday, that very whimsical nature about it. I think that the atmosphere is great. V. Schwab's writing is fine. Like I do enjoy her writing, but it depends on the story. And I think that she does have a very good writing style that's transferable to different genres. I mean, she predominantly writes fantasy. I would say that this is more like horror fantasy. Adi LaRue is more fantasy romance. Vicious is sci-fi. She has like a very transferable writing style. I find it to be very inoffensive. So I wouldn't say that there's anything overly like magnificent or that stands out about her writing. So like with this one, like the writing was good. It created the atmosphere that she was trying to create. Aside from the fact that I wasn't like overly invested in the story and attached to the characters, like the characters were fine. And this one I do, I did enjoy it more than I enjoyed things like Monsters of Rarity, but I feel like this one falls into more dark shade of magic with me where like I acknowledge the merits. I don't think it's a bad book. I personally just wasn't like super invested in the story. So when I put this through Core Pilot it came out as like a very low four star. So we're gonna call it like a 3.5. I do think it's decent. I think Think if the synopsis of this is something that you have been interested in then maybe pick it up it is great for spooky season we have ghosts in here as well as like the eeriness of the manor house gallant just for me it was like good i enjoyed the piece of it and the fact that it took me like i read this pretty much in two sittings it's just not going to be a standout book for me but like i said i finished this one off yesterday afternoon really quickly so i actually just spent the rest of the day playing disney dreamlight valley and then i watched i think three or four episodes of the midnight club which i'm still really enjoying. Although would not recommend watching that show when you are pet sitting in a house that is not your own. And I know how spooky this house is because there is one kind of like lamppost at the end of the drive. Everything else is pitch black. Like I have always been scared of the outside, especially at the back of this house at night because it is pitch black. You cannot see a foot in front of your face. Like it is true darkness. And then we have like those wind chimes outside of the front door. There's obviously like a lot of animals here. So any like small noise I was just jumping at and it was definitely a spooky yuki experience but um i'm actually really enjoying midnight club now that i'm getting into it it's essentially about this group of sick teenagers that are all terminally ill and they go to this house to kind of to die there essentially it's like a hospice for teenagers but one of the girls who goes there like the main character if you will is searching for a cure because she read about this one person who was there and ended up walking out like the only person pretty much who's ever lived that's gone to this place so she heads there like with a little bit of hope searching for this miraculous cure that this young girl found and there is a club that they have that happens at midnight every night where they all gather and tell like a spooky ghost story so i wasn't enjoying the spooky ghost story element of it because you'll have like a bit of plot and then it'll go to midnight club and then you'll like the the story the ghost story you will see i'm more interested in the plot of like her searching for this cure and there's like cults involved and like just a general like haunting of this hospice as well. So it took me, I enjoyed the first episode, but it took me a while to like warm up to the show as a whole because I was more interested in the plot, which is only really just starting to thicken like three, four episodes in. You two need to stop. Go kiss each other somewhere else. As opposed to the ghost stories that they're telling every night. And don't get me wrong, there is still a little bit of that happening. Um, it's just the, the plot is thickening. So I'm gonna wrap this up real quick because I don't want to fight with a 40 kilo and a 
two for Hilo Rottweilers, but I'm picking up The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. I'm currently on sprints with Hannah from Lida M for Gothtober, and I have made a small start on The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington, um, and I need to go, because I just, I don't want to fight with him. He's too big, he's too heavy, too much of a problem. I know the other one's here, so yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Come on, ladies. Everyone to bed now. Everyone to bed. Come on, up you go. There we go. Who else is going to bed? Not to bed. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> Come on. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no, come on, come on. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Fuck my life. Go oh, yeah. Oh last one. Come on. Come on to bed. Oh. Is that everybody in? Oh, somebody's laid an egg. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. Good night, my gals. I'll see you in the morning. Thank you. Got a late night, Eggy. Good night. Good afternoon. I have just gotten home. The kids are very, very excited to see me. So I'm not sure what Curtis has been doing with them this weekend. Um, I actually really, really want a coffee because I've missed my Nespresso machine and also my pumpkin spice cold brew that I use as a creamer. But it's four o'clock and I've been up since seven. So if I have a coffee now, then your girl is not sleeping tonight because Nespresso is strong. But it is Monday. Ideally, we should have finished this vlog yesterday. We didn't, so we're doing it today. So I did indeed start and make a dent in the shadow of what was lost by James Islington, Islington, I still do not know, but I'm 164 pages into it, which isn't too bad. I mean, it's still a 700 page book. So, I mean, your girl still has a ways to go, but let me tell you, I'm having a good time with this. I understand why this author is compared to Sanderson. I mean, you get the vibes just from the cover straight away, but um, I get it because he has a very accessible writing style with like a, a larger cast of characters, a magic system and a world that's really easy to get to grips with. It's not dense or anything like that. I have been told this is a fast read as well. When anyone tells me that 700 page book is a fast read, I'm like, girl, you lying. But you know what? I'm making it through. I barely read anything today. So this was all yesterday and it was only the afternoon because like on Saturday, I spent the entire of last night binging episodes of the midnight club i only have two episodes left and honestly i'm hyped but i'm not sure what i want to do with my life when it's over and i did actually want to watch those two episodes tonight and i still kind of do but it's also house of the dragon and walking dead night so i'm not sure if i'll be able to fit them in but anyway um i am going to be carrying this over obviously into next week's vlog so i don't want to talk too much about it but in this we are essentially following a boy whose name i have forgotten is he called davian and he lives in a world where there used to be people called augers, which I think were kind of like gods. And they had the ability to read people, tell when people were lying, like read people's minds, I think. And there was also a version of them. I'm not sure what exactly they were, but they're called the gifted. And they have like a kind of facet of the augers ability where they can use something called essence and manifest it into like the physical realm. So they can use it to like make shields and like physically attack people. The Orgers I think were pretty much all slain and then the gifted were enslaved and Davian is gifted. He's approaching his trials, which he's very nervous about passing because his ability hasn't manifested. However, he does have an ability that he shouldn't have, which is the ability to tell whether people are lying or not. So on the day before his trials, he's actually approached by an elder gifted who tells him that he knows that Davian is an Orger and there is a big like magical barrier 
area to the north that is failing. He gives Davian a magical artifact and tells him to go to the north to repair this barrier because they're very worried that all of these trapped monsters are going to come through and they know how to fix it but they can't do it without an Orge's ability. So Davian heads off to the north, leaves the school behind, remember that he is enslaved, all of the gifted are enslaved so it's not actually legal for him to do this. So he's kind of on the run with his best friend and this artifact and hijinks ensue. So I'm having a real good time with this, really excited to dive back into it and I have heard like it's been recommended that you read the books in this series like pretty close together so I'm definitely going to be looking at getting providing that I continue to enjoy it of course I'm going to be looking at getting my hands on book two and three and then hopefully finish the series before the end of the year also should mention because I couldn't yesterday because of the way that I was being mauled by Rottweilers this book is actually my Patreon pick for September it was Princess's pick and this was also a gift from Nina so thank you very much to Nina for gifting this one to me so that does bring us to the end of this week's vlog because I'm about to get next week started straight away which once again is just going to be a standard weekly vlog. I'm having a great time vibing guys I don't know if you can tell and I've actually read quite a lot this week. A lot of them were short books yes but it's been a while since we've had like I just feel like I needed the pace because I've been a bit slumpy we all know I've been a bit slumpy so just finishing books really quickly um has given me a little bit of a, a rejuvenation I don't know what I'm saying anymore but I've read a lot I'm happy with what I've read next week will be more of the same. Once again a big thank you to wild for sponsoring this video and remember if you'd like to check out wild for yourself and move their new limited edition scent you can head to the link in my description box and enter the code bb2022 to get 20 percent off all wild products but i do hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog if you've made it this far if you have please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if y'all wanna and i'll see you guys next week bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you Go where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no